now invite Mr. Howard G. Buffett to join His Excellency the President on stage. <laughs> Howard G. Buffett, visionary of sustainable well-being. You are recognized worldwide for your ingenious philanthropy, showing how humanity can live much better lives from the bounty of the land while protecting our environment for the future. The immense scale of your personal commitment to Rwanda's agricultural transformation, to our national parks, and to the security of our wider region is as humbling as it is empowering. On behalf of a grateful nation, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda hereby bestows the order of outstanding friendship, Ijihango, on Mr. Howard G. Buffett. Congratulations, sir. You are kindly invited to the podium for your appreciation marks. It's a great honor to receive this. I thought what I might do is just take a few minutes and tell you what Rwanda has taught me. Um, most of you all know very well the history of the country and what it's achieved. In 1974, January of 74, I stepped onto African soil for the first time at 19 years old. I started in Ghana, Ivory Coast, came down around, uh, visited five countries. South Africa was under an apartheid regime. Some of you will think back and understand why Rwanda was not on that list as we traveled from the United States. And then about 20 years later, 1996, I returned to South Africa. And um, a lot had changed from 1974 to 1996. And a few years later, I came to Rwanda for the first time in 1978, in 1998. And looking back at those two countries at the time that I started to visit in the 90s, who could imagine how different they would look and that Rwanda meaning no offense to South Africa, has left South Africa in the dust, as we would say in the United States. So over a period of 20 years, um, our foundation team and myself, we ended up visiting every country on the continent of Africa. We worked in 44 countries. And we wanted to do something transformational. We really struggled to get that done. So I was able to realize we could cheat. We could come to a transformational country and make it easier for ourselves. And that's what we did. There is no country on this continent where we could do what we are doing today, hands down. Now you don't get there by hoping or wishing. You don't achieve the opportunity and the changes by thinking about them. You have to have strategy and vision and leadership. We all know the leadership that President Kagame has provided. I've stopped in African countries to see other presidents. And they'll ask me, where are you going? I say, I'm going to Rwanda next. We wish we could be like Rwanda. Other presidents have said that to me on this continent. That is the highest honor, Mr. President, that you could receive of your peers. Now, once I was across the border in Uganda visiting President Museveni, I wanted to tell him that President Kagame's cows were better, but I refrained, um, and they are. Uh, he said something to me that stuck with me, and most of you here will know exactly what he meant. He said, someday 
Americans and Westerners are going to stop treating us like children. Rwanda has led the way to show what it means to stop treating African nations like children. We feel very fortunate to be able to invest in this country, to call people here friends, to call Rwanda a second home, to call the president and the first lady friends, and that will never change. Mr. President, we stand with you now, and we will stand with you in the future. Thank you, sir.